Hi, my name's Jackie and I'm a GeoCorp intern at the BLM in Canyon City, Colorado. Canyon City is a small town southwest of Colorado Springs, right on the eastern margin of the Front Range. As far as the geology goes, Canyon City has all the types of rocks. It's been intruded by igneous rocks, overlain by sediments, and compressed and folded to form some of the cool minerals like garnet. Since Canyon City has been able to capture a big chunk of Earth's geologic history, it's also been a hot spot for university field camps since the early 1900s. I work at the Royal Gorge Field Office, which manages all BLM land in eastern Colorado. At this office, two geologists manage all non-renewable minerals in this region, which means that there's always a lot of work to do. So work starts at around 8.30 to 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. You'll need a government ID to get access into the building. This is my desk area where I pretty much do everything except mine inspections. Usually I start the day by checking my government email to see if anyone has reached out with questions regarding mining claims, prospecting guidelines, or even just to check on the mineral rights to their land. This part is interesting because I get to look at the documents that tie into the history of how land was distributed. Sometimes government land was granted to individuals, but only the surface rights were given in cases such as where the individual would mainly use the land for grazing. And as the land was passed down or sold, the subsurface minerals were still the property of the federal government. This is Jackie. So at around 10, I get the first call of the day. This person was calling to see if an area on BLM had been claimed. Yeah, um, so do you have a general location as to where it is? And if you have GPS coordinates, that would be perfect, but a township and range. Okay, perfect. So I use GIS to locate the area and see if it's available to be claimed. Usually it's not just a simple check because the area may not be allowed to be staked due to it being a recreation site or a national monument. But after researching the area, I'll print out a map with the claim status, which can be used to file a claim at the BLM State Office. So the person who called me gave me an email that I could reach them at. A lot of people prefer to come to the office with questions, and in those cases, I'll meet them in the visitor area to help them out. When I'm not working with the public, my main project is to recreate a system that calculates reclamation bonds for the Royal Gorge Field Office. Reclamation bonds are an estimate for how much it would cost to reclaim the land after it's been mined. Usually mining operations will reclaim the land on their own, but in the case where they leave without reclaiming, the BLM requires that the operations pay a bond before they even begin operating. And the bond gets returned to the operator if they reclaim the land to the BLM standards. The BLM manages a wide range of mining operations. It scales from something as small as a placer operation, where someone uses a high banker or dredger, to something as large as a granite quarry or even an underground gold mining operation. So in my bond estimator, each tab on this Excel doc will calculate the bond amount for different types of operations. The one I'm currently working on calculates the cost of reclaiming an open pit mine, which usually mines materials such as clay. When the area is being reclaimed, the high wall needs to be reduced to a slope that looks natural. So in this approach, a track dozer will need to carve off pieces of the wall at the top and then push them to the bottom in order to reduce the overall slope. And to my surprise, I had to unearth a lot of my forgotten geometry skills in order to calculate this volume estimation. This also estimates the volume of each berm in place and how much it would cost to remove them. Here I calculate how much topsoil, mulch, fertilizer, and seeds it will need to cover the area of disturbance. So this also takes into account current labor rates and how much it would cost to pay equipment operators. It also looks at how much it would cost to transport the equipment. After having been working on this for a few months, I've learned a ton about the small and large costs that go into making sure the area looks like it did before the mining operation. And there's still a lot of work to be done in this estimate of reclaiming an open pit, but as of right now, I was able to get a price that falls within the range of what other systems have calculated. 
To get this estimate, I use numbers from an actual operation, one that I'll get to see in person today as part of an inspection. This is what it looks like printed out. I've had to do a lot of reading about reclamation costs in order to create a catered system for the field office. I've found a few reclamation guides online. Nevada is really good at estimating bonds because 63% of the state is managed by the BLM. And I've referred to their guidebook a lot, but their estimates are geared for much larger operations. I frequently use the CAT handbook because it has all the specs for various equipment that would be used. In this handbook, I look for parameters such as bucket size or how many cubic yards of material a track dozer can carry so that I can calculate the trips it would take to doze all of the material. I also look for travel speed and production curves for how many buckets a dozer can haul in an hour in order to figure out how long the BLM would need to rent equipment or hire an operator. Being a geologist, one of my favorite aspects of the job is getting to go outside. I mostly inspect the smaller operations on my own, but today I get to go with my coworker Amber to the very clay mine whose stats I've been using to gauge an accurate bond estimate. So this operation is a clay mine, and it's important geologically because it's mining the fountain formation, which consists of fluvial or river sediments that were eroded off of the Pikes Peak granite, which had been pushed up into the ancestral Rockies. So when we inspect the operation, we make sure that the operators are doing everything that they said they intended on doing. This includes how they plan on storing hazardous materials or how they're managing water within the operation. We even check safety measures such as berm height, which has to come up to half of the height of the wheel of their largest piece of equipment. So after inspecting the lower part of the mine, we're gonna go to the top of the haul road to where they're currently doing most of the mining. When we got back, it was close to five, which is typically when I go home for the day. So working for the BLM as a geologist in the mining sector has definitely been an enlightening experience. I had kind of an idea of what my job would entail, but I didn't expect to learn all the details that go into mining law and how complex yet interesting they can be. If you like helping out the public and learning a ton about how federal minerals are managed and are interested in going out in the field, I highly recommend this experience.